Hello everyone, in this video we will start looking at the interrupts on peak 32. Let's have a look at our schematics. What we have today is I'll be using uh, three LEDs that I will put on my breadboard with the uh, current limiting resistors and then I will use the yellow LED that's on um, our nano board already and a switch that is on the nano board already. I will add another one to the separate breadboard, another switch. Let's go to datasheet for our nano board. On this datasheet, we can see that our switch is connected to PA22 pin and our LED is, which is here, is connected to PA23. We can confirm that down on the section 4.2 on the peripherals. And in here, you can see the LED is switch PA23. The distinct uh, feature on that LED is we have to drive the pin to the ground to activate the LED. We will remember that. And the mechanical switch is on uh, PA22. But you have to be careful in here. That's a misprint probably left over from the other data sheets that when they were just someone just forgot to delete the PA15. So it's PA22. Let's go to the data sheet for our microcontroller itself. On the main page, we can see that to our use, we have external interrupt controller called EIC. Let's have a look where it is. Data sheet is telling us that an external interrupt controller is on the page 337. I'm gonna click on that, which takes me to that page. In here, you've got overview, features, block diagram, and other um, descriptions. We now interested in this 16 external pins. So 16 channels that we can um, invoke the external interrupt. There is one non-maskable pin, which is the higher priority um, interrupt. We will leave this one for now. We will be focusing on the external interrupts, this one. So we can find the other uh, setup functions, how to use the interrupts. In our project, we are not going to be, um, we will be using a harmony, so we don't have to be worried about this for now. Let's go to MP Lab. In MP Lab, let's create another project. Uh, harmony, okay, okay, and I'm just going to call it um, Interrupt uh, Basic. This is our basic introduction to the interrupts. Click Next. And in here, our device, which is straight on the list, I click finish. Let's launch the uh, Harmony configurator and wait for it to um, be fully up. Once we've got our Harmony configurator, let's go to MHC, tools and pin configuration. Um, there's pin diagram, pin table, pin settings. I'm not going to use pin diagram. I'm not going to use pin table. Pin settings is the best ones for us. Let's configure the pins now, starting with the LEDs. So on the PA04, I have my red LED, and that is going to be GPIO. I will call this red LED, and that is out. Now, the latch on this LEDs, I'm going to set them to low, which means the LEDs are uh, switched off. Um, as the initial um, position. GPIO and 6 is GPIO. I will configure them quickly. The LEDs are configured. All of them are out and on the low latch, which means they are off on the initial state. Now, the LED that's on the board, as we said, is on the PA23. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this to the GPIO and I'm going to call this yellow LED on the board, which I'm going to just add B at the end. That is out and the latch is high because to switch this on, I want to drive the latch low. So my initial um, startup uh, position is going to be on high, which the LED is going to be off. Okay, now the important thing, we will set up our switches, which will be triggering the external interrupts. The first switch that we will configure is the one that it's on the board connected to port PA22 to the pin PA22. 
So in here, what we have to set is set up as an external interrupt six. This is on the channel six. I'm going to call it switch one. It's important that we pull this up. Let's remember. Now, other switch that I have on the board is on a PA25, and that is my channel external interrupt 13. I will call this as my switch two. And again, pull up. Let's remember to pull those pins up. Okay, so all the pins now are configured. Let's go back to our project graph. And in here, let's uh, configure some functions. First of all, let's go to system and then cortex configuration, cystic and enable cystic. In here, make sure you've got the milliseconds set to one. So what this does, it will enable us to use the delay millisecond function to create a time delay. Then let's go to our peripherals go to EIC and add this to our graph. On the EIC, as we've said, we're using channel 6 and then we're using channel 13. How to set them up is you have to tick enable interrupt and then external interrupt edge selection is on rising edge, rising edge detection. I will set the same thing on the channel 13. And now our interrupts are configured. Let's generate the code. Once that's done, let's go to our project files, source file, main C, double click. And now in here, first of all, what we have to do is add some functions after the initialize. I'm going to make some space and then I will add the function. So let's do this step by step together. Double click, navigate declaration function. These are all the functions that are initialized during the startup of our chip. Port, clock and so on. So first thing I want to go for is the cystic timer initialize. I'm going to go navigate declaration definition. All the definitions, all the functions that we can use for the cystic are here. What we have to do is copy the first function from that list, which is timer start. This one, let's do this, okay. Copy that to our main file, and I'm gonna paste it there. Delete the void, nothing there, and finish the line. What that function does is start in the timer that will help us to calculate the milliseconds delay. Let's go back to the uh, cystic functions. And in here, what we need to do, what we need to borrow is this function, delay milliseconds. I'm going to copy that to my main C. I uh, will make some space in here. We'll use this in a moment. And in here, I'm going to finish that. So that function, what it requires is in those brackets, it requires the time uh, delay, the required delay in milliseconds. So for instance, 500 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds. So now we've got the timer start. We've got the function that we will use. Let's go to our interrupts. So go back to the uh, initialization file. In here, we've got EIC initialize, select, the right click and then go to definition in here there are all the functions for the external interrupts we need to um, have the function that will be operating on our interrupt so that function is is there so it's EIC callback register okay let's copy this to our main file and that goes straight underneath the timer. Close the line. So in here, what is happening is that function is requiring some information from us. So which pin are we using for our interrupt? So in here, oop, in here, I will say that I'm using the pin six for the interrupt. Now we have to declare the name for the callback function 
and we'll talk about this in a moment. So in here, I will paste this function. So EIC user handler, you will see this quite often. And in the context, we're just gonna click zero. Okay, there is an error, but let's leave this for a moment. Let's create some sample program we will I'll be talking about one second let me just type it quickly we have a sample program it's very very simple um, so I want the LEDs to blink in a 500 milliseconds interval so I've got green LED on for half a second off then yellow on for half a second off and then red and that's gonna loop all the time the program is gonna be running I have used the cystic function I don't need it there now uh, we need to create a function which is called EIC user handler and I will call I'll create that function in here user handler function created and basically let's go um, explain what is happening so our program is running continuously looping this whatever you have there this is very simple with the LEDs so this program is running and that external interrupt is waiting on a high level waiting for that pin 6 to be pressed and then once it detects the rising edge the user handler EIC user handler function it's going to be executed which is here and then after the end of this function the program will resume the EIC user handler function that I've created is again very simple. I'm using the yellow LED that is on the on our nano board. I wanted to switch turn on for one second, switch off, then wait one second, and then blink three times in a 200 milliseconds interrupts intervals. And then after that, it's not looping, but once the last blink has been executed, it's going to go back to the program and run it again let's test that function then let's program our chip and see if it's running as expected I don't have any board uh, connected yet so I'm gonna go to my program settings properties and once that's loaded I've got a simulator no I've got my board connected curiosity I'm gonna apply and there we go click OK and I'm gonna go now and program build the program and program the target programming is uh, complete we can see the program is running as we've expected so we have green yellow red green yellow red now what we want from the program is to execute the interrupt on press or that switch so we want him to stop executing what he's doing in the main program and go to the interrupt routine so I press this switch and I'm expecting that LED to start blinking as expected three blinks and it goes back let's see at which point the interrupt has been activated and let's see if the program is returning to that point so I'll try to catch it just before the red LED blinks there we go and I wanted to go to red LED great now I'll try to do the same with uh, yellow LED okay and a yellow LED now please great so as you can see once the interrupt has been invoked the main program is stopped but then after that function is executed it goes back to the line that it was stopped let's um, try to use this switch now to maybe create some function with the LEDs there I will modify this program quickly to use the external interrupt pin and now on which um, let's have a look just make sure on which channel it is I think it's 13 well let's double check together so I'm gonna go to the functions and yes I have the pin 13 activated as well so I will change this to pin 13 and let me just change this code quickly once again our program the standard program um, in in a while function I have not changed anything we will be using the external interrupt on pin 13 
and a user handler function. This is the user handler function. So I'm using the LEDs that are on our uh, board and um, our uh, breadboard. And what I wanted to do is, first of all, I wanted to be stopped for one second. So we know that we went into the interrupt routine, then green LED blinks twice, then red LED blinks twice, then we've got half a second break, then green and red LED together, they blink twice. We got half a second break and then the program returns to the normal execution there. Let's uh, build and program and send it to the board. We can see the program is functioning as previously. Um, we shouldn't have any action on this switch because we have deactivated it. So nothing happens as I keep, uh, keep pressing it. Once I press on that switch, I'm expecting to invoke the external interrupt, which will blink twice the green, twice the red LED, and then both of them at the same time. And after a short break, they will return to the main program. Let's uh, press the uh, switch now. Twice red, yellow, uh, green, yellow, and red. And that's it. Let me give some shadow. Okay, let's press the interrupt. Green, red, twice. And a normal functioning. With the interrupts, you, as we said, you have to be wary that it stops at the current line of execution. So for instance, if we stop it at the LED when it's lit, I'll try to go for the yellow one, observe what's happening. Interrupt is on, but the main function, the main code stopped at the same time. So you have to be wary when you program the interrupt that this is what is happening. If you're lucky enough to hit on the uh, break where the LEDs are off, let's go for the yellow one again. Oh, not there. Let's go again for the uh, yellow to be off and off then that looks normal. That is the introduction to the interrupts and I would like to invite you to the next video where we will where we will look a little bit more about what is happening with the interrupts. Just a small project. Thank you and uh, see you then.